mean, you start with the answer instead of just the problem. Amen. And again, today we are privileged and honored to have Dr. Carl Ball, the uh, founder and director of Creation Evidences Museum in Glen Rose, Texas, sharing this broadcast with us. And we're going to be talking about the creation. We're going to be talking about what God did, how He did it, how it looked, what, uh, what was the state of the earth before the flood, what happened to it during the flood, what happened to it right after the flood, and how these things have progressed over the years. And it's just really an honor and a privilege to have Dr. Ball in our studio today. So let's have a word of prayer, and then we're going to get right into some real good stuff. So I want you to pay very careful attention to every word on this broadcast today. Father, we thank you. And we bless you. We ask you to flood our minds with revelation and anointing, flood and overflow our spirits with revelation from heaven, and we thank you for it. Father, we thank you for your word. Amen. We give you praise and honor for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Dr. Ball, it is so good to it's have you here It's a pleasure to be today. here. Praise the Lord. I hope you've started a new movement. I hope every <laughs> ministry in America and around the world has a guest who uh, has a background to show that in his area of research, the Bible is exactly yeah, what it claims I, to be. Well, you know what? Now, there's a, there's a, a move of God to do this anyway. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, God's Word is true. Yes. And I don't, whatever He has said can be depended on. And there's power in the Word of yeah. God. And well, we're, we're, fi we're having to find out uh, that God's Word is final authority. His Word is final authority about the way you raise your children. His Word is final authority about what, the way you act, the way you think, what you do. If you're going to live in any kind of victorious life yes. in this earth, you're going to have to do it on the Word of God. There yes. isn't any other way to do it. There's no other way. You see, there are four great questions of life that scientists, philosophers, uh, social workers have grappled with. Every one of us has asked these four questions. Only the Bible can adequately answer them. Number one, who am I? Number two, where did I come from? Number three, what's my purpose here? Number four, where am I going? Every mature person around the world, every developing person around the world, is to some degree preoccupied with those four questions. Mm -hmm. And only the manual, the Word of God, can answer those Praise questions. God. Now, when um, I knew that when I first heard you speak, which was several years ago, but I, I, I had already settled that in my heart and my mind that God's Word is final authority. Now, when I, when I read it, I may not understand what He is saying, but I understand what He said is right. Yes. Now, the problem is not to try to make what he said fit what I want to think. We must respond to him, we, yeah. not get him to yeah. line up He's with right. us. He's right. He's always if right. If anybody's missed it, it's been me. Now, the thing that, I, thing that I'm obligated to do is spend enough time in his word, in prayer, in study, not questioning whether his yes. word's true or not, but receiving from the Holy Spirit who is the leader and the, and oh, the yes. guide. And that, illumines our mind. Yeah, he wrote yes. it. He wrote it, He yes. knew exactly what he meant when he said it. Holy men of God were born along by the Holy Spirit. I, I, Charles Capps, a good friend of mine and a, and a powerful man of God, made this statement. He said the Bible is so simple. We've had to have help misunderstanding. And that's exactly the truth. I, had, but, I would agree <clears throat> with that completely. We actually work out a system. We work to deviate from the Bible. Yeah. And uh, in theology or practice or science or sociology, whatever our commitment in life, if we'll just let the Bible be God's Word, that it already is, but be God's Word to us, then we're corrected oh, in yeah. our lives. Oh, yeah. It straightens us out. Yeah. His Word produces faith, and faith produces success. And there's no Amen. other, you can't get there any other way. Um, in the beginning, God created 
the heaven and the earth. Now, John, the Apostle John, by the Holy Spirit, wrote in uh, first chapter of John, first verse, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, and all things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Now, I want to point out something right here in verse 2 of uh, the Gospel of John. Uh, well, let me read down into verse 2 again. In the beginning was the Word. In the beginning, God. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God the same. Yes. God's Word and God are the same. Now, that's not all that hard to understand. I mean, my Word and, and I... Uh, we're the same. Yes. Words your word and you your thoughts. are the That's same. That's right. You, if, if you mean one thing and you say another, you're a liar. Yes, that's right. Now, God is not a man that he should lie. He said exactly what he meant. He meant exactly he meant what he exactly said. exactly what he said. He, he did exactly what he intended to do, and it worked just exactly the way he revealed these words. And it'll work today. Oh, yeah. It's a living word, yeah. whether it's the uh, written word of God or the living word of God, Jesus Christ, all consistent. God is consistent with himself. You know, uh, the <clears throat> pagans have problems with our Christianity. They say you have three gods. No, we have one God. Uh, it's not one plus one plus one. It's one times one mm -hmm. times one. Mm -hmm. Each person of the Trinity uh, amplifies and displays the other persons of the Trinity, and the Word of God displays all the Trinity in tangible form. He's consistent with His Word and with Himself. Well, that's, that's easy to see when you begin to understand that man is a spirit, has a soul, lives in a body. I yes. mean, he, he's three but parts. We're but we're one entity. But you don't ever see, you don't ever see the, the man divided up in three parts and see all three parts walking around separate. They're walking around together. They're You're functioning right. together. And that's um, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit of God. Uh, God has privileged us to make it simple so we could understand uh, God is God, oh, yes. but he's, he has allowed us to see the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen, you've seen the, Father. the Father. And the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ, sure. all consistent yeah. as one entity, Absolutely. yet displayed in, in three persons. All right. In the beginning, God created. Why don't we start where he started? <laughs> and... and uh, you just, you just take it from there. And now, now I want to mention this too. You, you, when you first started studying this, um, I know you were, I know you were, uh, you had studied evolution and, um, but then I, I have never heard whether or not, I don't know when you accepted the Lord. I don't know All whether right. it was before you got into school or, or I'm, after or what. I'm very glad to reveal that. Number one, I do know Jesus Christ is my personal Savior. There was a time I believed and taught evolution. I do not believe nor teach evolution. I believe and teach scientific and biblical creation. And the two are totally consistent. I should say biblical and scientific creation. I trusted Jesus Christ at an early age. And looking back upon my life, I realized that that was the disposition of God at work in my own life and disposition because knowing my own heart and mind, if I had reached adulthood without being saved, I would have been and would today be in all probability a practicing atheist. I'm not an atheist. But there was a time, even as a born-again Christian, when due to my academic background and the errant nature of my own mind, I tried to become an atheist and fought atheistic thoughts. But I'm glad that God's seed lived within mm -hmm. me and Amen. God is true to himself. Uh, I studied evolution and 
did what many Christians do. I surrendered to the concepts of evolution. Now, at the same time, I thought I believed the Bible. But like you've said on both of these telecasts so far, uh, we try to accommodate the Bible to our theories. That won't work. No. And after some years in this academic research, I realized that if God brought us about by an evolutionary process, which is theistic evolution, or some call it progressive creation, depending on how you look at it, uh, both of those are cop-outs. Uh, poor theology and poor science on the part of both of them. I finally realized that if God used evolution to bring me into existence, then God had lied to me because God said he did it at a specific moment in time, a specific experience in the Garden of Eden. And if God had lied to me, I wouldn't want to trust a God who would lie. Hmm. So I realized that I was in error. It was not that God was in error. I still had problems with the age dating. But on some of these telecasts, we'll resolve those problems of how old the universe is, how long ago was the creation. Jesus said, from the beginning of the very creation, the very first week of that creation, God created Adam and Eve. We do not need to rationalize and explain away the truths of the Word of God. So yes, there was a time in my life when I recognized that I was a sinner in need of fellowship. First of all, in need of forgiveness from the personal God. Now, is there a personal God in the universe? Would you like to discuss that for a moment? Sure. The manual, which is the Word of God, begins with a statement, in the beginning, God. Now, since we know that's what the Bible says, can we verify scientifically that the universe does display there is a personal God? Yes. For instance, as we look at the universe, the first thing we see is limitless space, and then unending time, and then perpetual motion. And then we see unbounded variety in all the creation and infinite complexity. Brother Copeland, watch this. The first cause of limitless space must be infinite in extent. For someone to cause this and bring it about, he must be infinite in extent. The first he cause... He still has to be bigger than whatever that's he right. created. You that's can't, exactly you can't, right. You can't create something that's bigger and, and has more expanse than you do. That's right. That, yeah. You're the master of what you create, and you're the controller of what you create. So the first cause, and I capitalize first cause, the first cause of limitless space must be infinite in extent. Now, the first cause of unending time must be eternal in duration. Mm -hmm. The first cause of perpetual motion must be omnipotent in power. The first cause of unbounded variety must be omnipresent in all the phenomena of that variety. And the first cause of infinite complexity must be omniscient in intelligence. What I'm saying is, if we look at the physical universe, we find that that physical universe demands the existence of the God of the Bible. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Now let's take it a step further. Let's look inward in this existence of the universe. We've looked at the broad scale in this first paragraph. Let's look inward. We find as we observe each other and observe life in general, that first of all, there is um, personality. We find individuals with personality. And then we find feeling. After that, we find will. Every individual I've ever met has a, a will of his mm -hmm. own. Mm -hmm. Then we look further and we find that person has within him ethical and religious values. We look again and he has some system of right and wrong, of righteousness, of justice, of love, and a display of life. Now watch closely. The first cause of personality must be personal. The first cause 
A feeling must be emotional. The first cause of will must be volitional himself. The first cause of ethical values must be moral himself. The first cause of religious values must be spiritual by nature. The first cause of righteousness must be holy. The first cause of justice must be just. The first cause of love must be loving. The first cause of life must be living. As we observe the universe in general, and man in particular, the first cause behind all that universe and us is not only the God of the Bible, but is the God expressed in the person of Jesus Christ. We're back to shouting ground yeah, if we objectively yeah. observe the universe. Because something unrighteous cannot create righteousness. <laughs> you can't produce righteousness. No, no wickedness can produce righteousness. No. And no righteousness could produce wickedness. That's right. It's absolute. And that's absolute. You just can't do that. We're back, to, we're back to the yeah. God of the Bible yeah. as revealed in Holy Writ. So you have, a, Jesus said God is a spirit, and they that worship him worship him in spirit and truth. So you have a spirit that is love. Yes. That has feelings. That's right. Has a will of yeah. his own. And, I mean. A nature of his own. It's amazing. Yeah. It's glory ground. Now, if there's time on this telecast, oh, uh, you, uh, you ask me to cover the whole creation in 10 telecast. It took God six days to do it. <laughs> <laughs> it, may, it may, we may be here a while. Uh, is there a scientific evidence that the universe requires a divine creator? Yes. Dr. Robert Gange took the information available from the major universities, and he found that uh, our entire planet Earth has a specific amount of information in the inorganic material, and it's listed as, scientifically listed as, 160 exponential bits of information. That means a tremendous amount of information. Take the whole solar system, it's 170 exponential bits of information. Take the entire universe, it's 235 exponential bits of information. But now let's come to living material. The secular scientist wants the universe to produce life and ultimately to produce man. It won't work. Watch this closely. The smallest unit of living material we know anything about is a protein molecule. Major microbiologists have observed the protein molecule and have found that a single protein molecule holds 1,500 exponential bits of information. Now, let's see if I can say this quickly. All of planet Earth holds 160 exponential bits of information, all of the inorganic non-living material. All the solar system, 170. All the universe, 235. But one single living protein molecule that can't even reproduce itself holds 1,500 exponential bits of information. Now let's go to a molecule that can produce itself, and we go from a protein molecule to a bacterium, an organism that can reproduce itself. Let's take a standard bacterium, E. coli, that's in our intestinal tract. One single E. coli bacterium incorporates seven million exponential bits of information. Mm. Now let's come to a human cell. That's, a, that's an incalculable oh, number. Oh, yes. But now, hold your... Because an essential bit of information... Squares the preceding number. Yeah. Every time you add a single number, you square, you square the preceding it. number. We are light years. Finally, one human cell, just a single human cell, holds 20 billion... Oh exponential bits of information. My friend and brother, here's the whole bottom line of this thing. And I hope every person in this audience gets this. We want 15 billion years of time for the universe to produce man. Give it an eternity of time. There's no way. There is no way you can get more out of something than you put into it. 
<laughs> the entire inorganic, non-living universe holds 235 exponential bits of information. Now, to get from 235 to 236, you square all of that information. To get from 236 to 237, you square all that preceding information. It's so far beyond 235 exponential bits of information to 20 billion exponential bits. Oh. It is impossible for the universe to have developed us in the beginning, God. That's where we started, and that's where we conclude. My goodness, my goodness. That is so much information that it's incalculable. Incalculable. In one living cell yes. of a human being. No one can imagine how much that is. We can calculate it, but we can't imagine it.